In this video guys, we will have a look at another load balancing solution by Microsoft Azure and this one is the Azure Front Door service. So it's called Azure Front Door and as we can see here on the right hand side, this is the one that we will focus on today. But we can see there's many other Microsoft Azure load balancing solutions on the left here. And Azure Front Door is a global load balancing solution and it also offers protection of applications, APIs and websites with their threat protection feature capabilities built in as well. And this is all at layer 7. It's also a cloud content delivery network which provides acceleration for static and dynamic content. And when I say it's a global load balancing service, it provides load balancing globally, meaning it's not tied to any specific region or any specific location, such as the UK South or the UK West or anywhere in the US. Any region in the world like the Azure load balancer solution or the application gateway solutions are, they are tied to specific regions. So this one on the left here, let me change my mouse pointer. So this one here is tied to specific region, this load balancer solution and the application gateway as well, which is a layer 7 load balancer. Again, this is tied to a specific region. So the front door is actually quite similar to the cross regional or global load balancer here, which I've done a separate video on. But this is layer 4 where the front door service is layer 7. So it provides additional layer 7 capabilities to it, such as doing SSL decryption and encryption and scanning for threats and has a built in web application firewall. And it can also do caching and compression, URL redirection and things like that as well. And for completeness, there's also Traffic Manager, which is a global DNS based load balancer. So it relies on DNS capabilities. And because it relies on DNS capabilities, it has DNS specific limitations built into it as well, such as it does not fail over as front door service does. Front door service fails over instantly, where DNS relies on specific DNS timeout values to expire before it can fail over. And because as your front door is a global service, you do not need to specify any specific region when you're configuring it in the portal, which we will have a look at. Now to understand what CDN pops and edge locations are, they are referred to as being an entry point into the Azure global network. But what does that mean? Well, it's an entry point, a point of access. Basically, Microsoft has what's known as points of presence across the world. Actually, for front door, they are called edge locations. Point of presence or pop is for their content delivery network. So these POP servers are located throughout the world and if you deploy your app service in a different region, then POP servers will choose the endpoint which is closest to it. With CDN, it's typically content that doesn't change often, which is globally made available through these POPs. And Microsoft also utilizes the same POPs for their front door service. So in CDN, they are called POPs, but for front door, they are known as edges or edge locations. And in this image, it's just showing that users are routed to the closest edge location. So there's many of these around the world, these edge locations, and users are routed to the closest one. And the way it does this is it uses the Anycast protocol, which advertises the same public IP address across all of the entry points. Microsoft has a backbone that spans the entire world, so you could be anywhere. And with the Anycast protocol, it will take you to the closest edge location. So you can see how it ensures the traffic is always routed or rerouted to the closest entry point onto its backbone network. And because it takes the traffic as soon as it can off the internet onto the backbone network, therefore it provides things like better reliability, speed, efficiency and redundancy. And to see all of the edge locations throughout the world which users get their content off, you can see a list here. But it's probably better if I show you on a browser. So if I drag a browser to the left hand side here, we can see these are all of the edge front door edge locations by Metro. And you can see a list here, North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Middle East, India and Asia and Australia, New Zealand as well. And here are the states of the Azure government edge locations available on here as well. So as Azure Front Door is not tied to a region, as it's a global service, and this is actually a key part to understanding how the routing works, because the load balancer doesn't actually exist in the middle of the ocean, as in the previous image. Front Door makes the service available using a protocol called Anycast, 
which means the service or IP address is being advertised across all edge locations and you will be routed to the closest location based on where you are. And Zero Front Door also uses something called Split TCP, which breaks the connections into smaller pieces or multiple connections. And this means reducing latency and providing better performance as well. Now there's a couple of tiers with Azure Front Door as well. They're standard and then there's also premium as well. There's also classic, but classic is the older one. You would usually use the standard or the premium tiers. Now in the portal, it classifies the standard tier as delivery optimized, which means it does all the things that ensures performance is the priority. With standard, you have web application firewall, but have to create your own rules where premium has rules that are provided and managed by Azure. And premium is security optimized. So adds additional layer of security in there, such as it has a web application firewall and bot protection. It has private link support and integrates with Microsoft Threat Intelligence Service. You can see all of these actually down here. So you can see where it says no for the standard and where it's yes for premium. So the standard does not support Microsoft managed rule sets. It does support the custom one, but you'd have to create your own rules. And then it does not support bot protection and it does not support private link support. And with private link support, the Zero Front Door supports sending traffic to an origin. I'll explain what an origin is shortly, but it's basically the back end service. And a private link allows you to access Azure services hosted in Azure over a private endpoint in your virtual network, as opposed to using a public endpoint, which is usually the case. And then traffic between the VNet and the service goes over the Microsoft Backbone network. So there's no exposure over the internet. It keeps all the traffic private over the Backbone network. So that's available through the premium tier only. And just a warning, if you wanted to switch between tiers, you would have to create the Azure front door profile again. So try and pick the right one the first time. Now on the portal where it says for standard tier, delivery optimized versus the premium tier, which is security optimized. If we bring in the portal, and we click on create here. And then we can create an Azure front door profile from here or other offerings. And then we've got the option of quick create and custom create. Custom create is obviously more powerful, like the quick create. Define one endpoint with one origin and one WAF policy, but with custom create, you can do design an endpoint with multiple domains and origin groups, define routes to connect them and add web application firewall policies to protect them. Basically, the custom create gives you a lot more options, but let's but let's stick with quick create and go to continue to create a front door profile. And we can see over here the tiers. So we've got the standard, which is content delivery optimized. And then we've got premium, which is security optimized. Once we selected that, we can see at the bottom here we had a, another option. The enable private link service became available to us again. If we click it again. You can see it's gone and we can also see caching caching is also available to us so it will cache the content so as your front door doesn't need to fetch the content from the back end service as your front door will cache the content for us but i just wanted to show you the standard versus the premium next we'll have a look at origins so if we go to the next slide it's on origins i should have had more information here I suppose I can add it in after. So I wanted to show you how traffic is load balanced to the backend services. But to understand that, we need to understand an origin and origin group is. And origins can be seen as the backend application services. And an origin group is a group or set of origins. So an origin is the actual backend service itself, such as an application service. And an origin group will group these services together. And then the origin group itself can be associated with a route to determine how traffic will reach the origins. In other words, how traffic will reach your services. And the services are available through origins using either public IP or publicly resolvable DNS names. And these services via the configured origins can even be accessible from your own data center or other cloud providers. It doesn't need to be via the Azure cloud. And with the premium tier, you can enable the private endpoint feature, which means it's available using a private IP within your VNet as well. And as your front door can be used with a single routing method, but you can also combine routing methods as well to better suit your needs. And front door provides automatic failover by monitoring the applications using health probes. 
This is the back end health monitoring and it sports automated instant global failover using the health probes. Again, if we jump onto the portal again, we can have a look at the origins and see what they are made of. So if we go back to home on here, or go to front door and CDN profiles, we can discard this one. Let's click on create again, and let's go with the custom create so you can see both options. Go to continue to create a front door, and then if we go to endpoints here, or endpoint, and then we can add an endpoint. On the right hand side, we give it an endpoint name, my web app, and then it will add a subdomain here, endpoint host name, my web app, hyphen, all this jargon here, but you can use a custom domain as well, that's an option. So let's click add here, and then we've got this option to create routes here. We can add a route from here. We can also add a security policy as well, add a policy. So if we click on add a route here, and this is where origin groups can be associated with the route to determine how traffic will reach the origins. So over here, we give it a name, a route maps your domains and matching your path patterns to a specific origin group. So you give it a name, endpoint domains, you can give it the patterns to match, the accepted protocols, if you want any redirection, and then you specify the mapping, the origin group here, and the origin path, and any forwarding protocols over here, and if, and if you want to enable caching, and here is where we add a new origin group, so we can see the types of origins we can specify. We give it a name, my web app one And when we click on add an origin, or we can go back and specify my web apps, and then we can specify a specific origin and call that my web app one web app one And then here's the type of origins you can add. So you can add you can add storage as your blobs and other types of storages here as well. So you can add cloud service, app service, static web app, API management, application gateway. So an application gateway load balancer you can add as well. You can add a, just a public IP address. You can add traffic manager as traffic managers identified by a public DNS. You can have in you can have an Azure Spring Cloud container instances, or you can create a custom website. It might be a website hosted in your private data center or in Google Cloud, for example. So if you go to custom, you can add a custom domain here, test.com. So it does say, if you remove that, the host name must be a valid domain name, IP version four or IP version six. And actually, while we are here, these are some other key parts. I have a slide on my PowerPoint. And the next slide is just showing the origin on origin groups again. So we can see backend services in Azure, origin X and origin Y. And then we can have backend services in the DC or other cloud providers called origin Z here. But if we move over to the next slide, we can see routing methods. So how are services routed to the backend services? And there are four different routing methods here of how HTTP or HTTPS traffic is distributed between the different origins, and these are latency, priority, weighted, and session affinity. So with latency, requests are sent to the lowest latency origin, which means to the nearest set of origins, wherever they may be in the world to keep the network latency at a minimum. And this latency routing method, by the way, combined with the Anycast technology or protocol, means that the users get the best performance based on their location. And the closest origin is measured by network latency, not the one that is actually physically the closest. So it's network latency is how it's measured. And then the next one, the priority. With priority, you can have a primary and a secondary origin. And this way you give a higher priority to the primary origin which will always be used and the secondary origin will be used as a backup only. And you may know this with other technologies and other terminologies used with active standby or active passive deployments. Next is weighted. So with weighted, you can add a weight value to the origins and traffic is distributed between the origins by the weight values. And we've also got session affinity. And with session affinity, you can configure the session affinity so that users are directed to the same origin is similar to cookie persistence. And again, if we go back to the Azure portal, we can see some of these settings here. So we've got priority here. You can set the priority. And you've got the weight as well here, so we can set the weight from here. I'm gonna click cancel on here. 
and here we can see session affinity so we can enable session affinity as well on the origin group itself and we can see where the health probes are configured so if enabled front door service will send periodic requests to each of your origins to determine their proximity and health for load balancing purposes and at the bottom we've got some values as well here to do with the health probes again and the latency and once we've got a front door profile configured which i thought i did have one configured let's go to home on here and i'm going to go to front door and cdm profiles and i've got one here i created as a test earlier on and we can see the end-to-end -end settings in here so settings is where you configure things for the Azure front door. So we can see the front door manager, the domain, we can configure custom domains from here. So you can add a custom domain from here by clicking add and you can specify your custom domain. But your domain will need to be validated before traffic is delivered as well. So this way you would not need to use the Azure front door domain for your service. You can use your own domain. And we can click cancel here. We can go to Azure Front Door Manager as well. In Azure Front Door Manager, you can, and from here, you can add additional endpoints. Or you can manage your endpoints. So you can manage your routes for them or your security policy. So if we go to security policy, add a policy, it's basically your web application firewall policy. You can create a new one from here. Let's, let's click cancel there. Let's go to origin groups. These are your origin groups. So your group of application services, your backend services got your rule set let's have a look at the rule set so the rule set allows you to customize how http requests handle at the edge and provides more control of the behavior of your web applications and then you can specify specific rules here and add conditions let's look at conditions so you've got all of these conditions here client port server port so you can specify a specific client port for example any of these and then you've got actions as well here so these are the actions you can take upon these conditions. Here's where you add the rule, or add another rule, should I say. Let's go back to, let's discard this. Click yes. Go back to Azure Front Door and CDM Profiles. Go back to my Front Door Profile. And then the next one is Security Policies. We can add a security policy from here. We've already seen this. Let's cross this off. Next one is Optimization. So this is content and caching we can do that from here as well sorry compression and caching so caching and compression so that's available from here as well then the secrets you can add a certificate and it's only available for custom domains with your own certificates and you add a certificate here and then you've got this properties tab as well which provides some information